Here we're looking at two wires, one that's straight and one that's in a loop here. Now this one has a current going through it. And uh, so the current at the beginning is going to be this thing right here. And once the current changes, so when we have the change of current, that's going to create uh, a change in the magnetic field that is associated with this wire around it, right? And then because of the change of the magnetic field, that's going to make a change in the flux, right? And because of the change of flux, that is going to create um, an EMF. And uh, we can, we can, we can, we can look at the formula like this. Um, it would be the negative time derivative of the flux. And so we'll look at the equation of flux and we'll say, all right, well, it's a B and then we could say a n cosine theta, kind of skipping through a couple of steps here, but this is the essential formula. The n is one loop, so, you know, let's just kind of go away. The cosine is between the magnetic field that's around it. we got to figure out what the direction of that magnetic field is. And we also have the area, which is going to be like this, but that would be the normal of the area. So that will be coming out of the page. I can, I can make it kind of like this. Sure, that'll be the normal of that area. Now let's figure out the direction of this magnetic field here. Um, let's go ahead and try to do that. Well, I know one way that I can figure out what the magnetic field is inside of a loop. I can create an Amperian loop. So I can kind of draw this Amperian loop. I guess we'll call it going that way. And um, I'm going to try to figure out uh, if I had the Imperium loop, it would be more like mo mu naught i enclosed, and then it would be divided by the uh, perimeter of this thing, which would be two pi r. And then we kind of want to figure out what is the i enclosed in this. Well, the i's for this particular, the Imperium loops, the i's, the, the currents need to either be going into or out of the page in order for it to count anything but the problem is this current is going in this direction so it's not going out of the page it's not going into the page which means it's not going to contribute any current to the uh to the empyrean loop so we can actually just get rid of the currents in here the current would be zero inside of this empyrean loop there's no current um because it's not going into or out of the page so therefore the b would be zero for inside of this loop. Um, so that's one way we could figure out what that B is. Um, that, that, that's interesting. But if we wanted to sort of figure that out in a different way, we can kind of also look at it in terms of what direction is this current going? It's this way. So we could put our thumb in this direction and notice that our fingers would be coming out of the page. We would be expecting there would be the magnetic field coming out on this side in this direction. But the problem is we also have the, if we turn our finger or a hand around, we could actually notice it would be coming out of the page or down into the page that side too. So uh, technically, um, because it's on both sides, now we can notice, all right, well, what if we had a change of this kind of flux? Notice this would just cancel out to zero first off. But what if we had some kind of a change here? Let's say this would be plus 10. The other side would also be minus 10. This thing would be plus five. This thing would be minus five. So these things cancel each other out. And again, we would actually get zero for the inside of here as being B. Um, so that's, that's, that's another way we could figure out what that B is inside of there. Well, anyway, the point is that this thing is zero. So that's the answer.